guys, what's up? Sherry here from No Fuck Skin Crew. up sherry here from the fx cleaning crew how's it going so happy holidays um i just want to make a quick announcement that i am going to be doing readings again uh so the information will be in the description box i've taken a little break uh and that's so that i could work on my book so it's done now i've added all the information that i wanted to add um, and so what i've done is approached tarot and spirituality from um scientific point of view. So I get deeply into quantum physics. Um, I explain how consciousness um, happens. It's actually um, due to standing waves uh, and by dampening um, of these standing waves. So consciousness is actually created within the void, within the gap spaces. But I'm getting ahead of myself there. Um, so I also talk about the structure of the universe, everything is sound and numbers. Um, and I also explain that this information is ancient, so I get into um, sacred geometry as well. Um, everything can be traced back to the Vedics. <clears throat> so we already had um, a theory of everything thousands of years ago, but it's been forgotten. But we're starting to remember now, so awesome. And so, you know, that's basically what this channel is about. It's about consciousness and awareness and uh, raising the, the, the vibration of the planet. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, excited about it. I'll probably give a little quick synopsis of it at the end of the reading. Um, and what else did I want to say? Oh, um, for the readings, just make sure that you uh, wait until I respond uh, to the email before you send any payment. Um, because I want to be able to get the, the readings out to you guys within 24 hours, okay? So that way, you know, things aren't, you know, chaotic for me. So I can do it one at a time. Everybody will um, be rotated through, <laughs> except for my patrons. Um, if you've been a patron, I definitely will give you a discount. And also, you know, in, in celebration of the holidays, um, I'll also give a little discount for those of you who are returning uh, for a second reading. Okay, so I missed you guys so much and I'm so happy to be back and I love you. All right, cheers. Hi guys, welcome for this week's uh, Twin Flame reading. Uh, so this is going to be for uh, December the 23rd until the 30th. Okay, so let me see here. I think I'll use my deck. Let me just give it a quick shuffle. So I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this for a couple months now, so uh, bear with me if I seem a little spacey. I hope you've all been doing well. I missed you so much. Okay, so we're going to be doing a twin flame reading. You know what? Um, I think I'm going to use this for clarifiers and I haven't used the John Holland de deck for a while so I'm just going to pick a couple of cards from the John Holland so this is um, Psychic Tarot of the Heart and then yeah okay I was going to say I think I'll wait to pull the cards I'll pull them one at a time as we go okay all right, so um, let's begin. So beginning with the feminine side, in the past position we have four of swords, just breathe. So this card comes after heartbreaking news, heartbreaking conversation, um, a split of some kind, um, but what you're doing is you're actually retreating in order to heal yourself. So the feminine has um, gone into possibly some isolation in order to heal her heart, in order to think about things, um, you know, process things, let things go. 
All right, so this is a very airy card. Um, so it's all about the mind, contemplation. And so hopefully she's going to be coming out of that difficult period. So let's pull a confirmation card. Oop, sorry, I have the deck upside down. I made sure to check them before I began the reading. Okay, so there we go. This is my contemplation card. Okay, so the um, Seven of Pentacles is all about a pregnant pause, a gestation period. Um, something's happened in the 3D that slowed her down. This is so crazy because this is me. This is me completely. This is, um, you know, taking the time to do some work, right, um, and to review the past, to consider some things and to heal myself, but also you know, I'm putting a lot of work and effort into something in the past. Now, so this, you know, as a whole to the public, this represents the feminine really doing some soul searching. Um, and this pause has occurred because of reasons. <laughs> you know, it could be financial reasons. You know, for me, I, I had some financial hardships. So instead of focusing on the pain, I focused on the book. Okay, and so by doing that, I was allowed to heal, and um, and I'm so grateful because what I've learned during this time is priceless information, and of course, I'm going to be sharing that with you. My card table is a little rusty. Um, the cats have been sleeping on it, so I've had to remove some of the slots. So once I get my glue gun happening, um, I'll be able to fix that. But I'm only, only going to be using this top area for now. Okay, so for the masculine, the past position, the two of pentacles, finding balance. So in quantum physics, it requires consciousness in order to materialize something. Okay, so consciousness is the wave function collapse. There is chaos, okay, and then um, there's these waves that are sent out into the universe, okay, and it's so... It is in the spaces, like I said before, that um, matter begins to crystallize. So what this says is that there was a seed of intention. There was a conscious decision to manifest. And as that seed is taking root, it makes the world feel a little crazy, like you're on the spinning wheel. Okay, so this could also mean that you know several things are pulling you in different directions. Um, you have choices to make in the 3D reality, um, but really what this you know says at the bottom is finding balance. Okay, so I'm assuming that he has found balance. So let's just pull a clarifier for that. Wow, 1111. Okay, so we got a two here, two pentacles, and then we got the 1111 card. So twin flame, the masculine um, is making changes in the 3D reality in order to um, bring this twin flame connection um, into the physical. So the 1111 card is all about synchronicities. When you're in a twin flame connection, you start to see these signs, these coincidences. And hold on, <coughs> sorry, my throat is ticklish. So that's the universe trying to wake you up. It's, you know, um, these are things that are unexplainable. You can't deny them. At first, you can, you know deny them but they happen just too often that it kind of it it's meant to wake you up okay so the masculine knows who his twin flame is um, maybe he approached her in the 3d and is making changes to bring her into her life but you know the like I said things are very chaotic hopefully it's calmed down a bit Okay, so for the feminine's present position, two of swords, refusing to see. Okay, well, there is a masculine energy here, so maybe she's thinking about how the masculine is not seeing something, or, you know, this could be the feminine who's wearing the metal helmet. Um, so, you know, the universe is vibration, right? It's frequency. So when you're wearing this metal helmet, all the vibration is going to bounce off. So you're not going to be able to access that quantum information. Um, you're not paying attention. Okay. So 
this also represents a decision that needs to be made and because the decision is so important you can't um, make the decision, right? So you're, you're standing at a crossroads. Okay, so let's pull a clarifier, clarifier for that. Um, okay, so the Knight of Fire. So the Knight of Fire is unbridled passion. It's moving forward, you know, like a flaming arrow. Okay, so you're, um, you want to move forward. You want to feel alive. You want to feel free. You want to go after those desires, those dreams. You want to live a life that is full of positive vibrations, creativity, you know, you're fulfilling your passion. But here you are stuck with a metal helmet on your head. You're not, you're refusing to see, you're refusing to move forward. You're refusing to make any changes in your life. Okay? So for the masculine present position, Seven of Swords, seek the truth. A lot of air cards. So the Seven of Swords is the feeling of betrayal that somebody is stabbing you in the back. Um, what's catching my attention here is, you know, one person is looking in that direction, the other person is looking in the opposite direction. Um, so they're not in union, they're not joined, they're not connected. Um, but the feminine, who is at zero point, at the singularity, is opening the curtain. So where there was darkness, um, you know, it almost looks like he's wearing a mask or a veil. So where there was darkness and refusal to see, there's a feminine energy that is opening the eye, the, the mind's eye, consciousness, letting the light in. But again, at the same time, this is all about not being able to trust somebody. Um, somebody is sneaking around behind your back. Somebody is lying to you. Okay? But a door is being opened. Consciousness is, you know, there's that wave function collapse. Okay? Consciousness is the wave fun function collapse, not consciousness collapses the wave. Okay? So... Um, cognitive coherence is what's starting to happen. Okay, so the King of Pentacles. Wow, Pentacle action over on this side. So the King of Pentacles is like the father figure, but in the 3D. So this is all about taking care of your family, taking care of their needs, you know, making sure that um, they're set up, right? Um, providing for them. This is also somebody who is financially se um, secure, they're successful. Okay, so what I see here is, you know, the masculine, whatever this idea is, has worked out really well for him. But there are still some fears there. The feminine energy is tapping in, you know, cracking open the soul. The King of Pentacles is somebody who is very grounded, not moving, very solid energy. And then we got this air and this consciousness emerging. So in the present position, he's looking for the truth. He's seeking truth or the truth is coming to him. He's starting to believe something. But, like I said, in the 3D, he is, he's very secure financially. There's just something that uh, is nagging at him, perhaps. Get in there. Can you see those? All right. So, for the near future for the feminine, challenging times, the Five of Wands. So you can see here, there's a person who has a shield over their heart. Um, a lot of fire in the background, chaos, challenges, competition. But more importantly, this is talking about your confidence level. You know, you don't feel very strong. Uh, you don't feel that you can, um, you know, make it to the top, right? So you need a little bit of um, confidence boost, basically. 
So in the near future, you will be challenged. You will be forced to look inward. Um, you know, maybe you're triggered on some level, and so clearing those triggers are important as well. Right? That's what the Twin Flame Connection is all about. So one clarifier, Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is feeling dis disillusioned about somebody. Things didn't turn out the way that you expected. It's like, uh, you know, these faces are pretty much identical. There's no emotion. There's um, confusion. What do I do now? Um, there's uncertainty here. So the Seven of Cups is knowing what you want, but not knowing how to get there, right? So not feeling confident in order to move forward. There is definitely a decision that needs to be made. Um, and you've had a very long time to think about it, right? There's something that's calling to you, but you're afraid to take action. Instead, you're kind of cowarding. You're protecting yourself. You're in a defensive pose. Follow your heart is what this card says. Follow your heart. All right, so the near future for the masculine, six of wands. Nice, you guys are matching each other. Both wand energy. Believe and succeed. He, so it seems to me that he has found whatever truth that he was looking for. Um, very cool how these cards are kind of matching each other and that there's this beam of light. Right, this straight sword-like projection of light moving across his reading and there's a Taurus at the bottom here and that that's what my um, my you know my my book is about it's about the Taurus is at the, the, the center of everything okay that's so very cool so what I'm seeing here is consciousness rising to a successful state you know, believe and succeed. He's believing. He's moving forward. This could actually mean a trip across water as well. So people are cheering him on. He, he's very confident. Very proud of himself, which he should be. He's come a long way on his journey. He's almost there. Or he, he, he's actually arrived. Never mind. Okay. Um... Yeah, he's successful. There's still more, you know, trials ahead, I guess. Um, but he believes that he can succeed, okay? So, destiny, the wheel of fortune, goes around, comes around. So, this is about destiny. You know, like the clockwork universe, there are mechanics taking place in the background. Things are ticking along. Destiny is coming towards you, um, and everything that you desired or hoped for will be manifested. Um, actually, this is about good luck and good fortune. I don't know why I want to say that. It's because believe and succeed, and then we got this manifestation of you know something beautiful. Things work out. Okay, so destiny is on your side. Um, so reap the rewards big time, okay? Go for it. Or maybe he's moving towards destiny. He's allowing the current to draw him. Good luck, good fortune. It's good karma. Okay, so for the final outcome, we'll just wait on that. Let's move into the union energy. So on the feminine side, five of swords. Wow, more air, win or lose. So there is some negative energy being projected at the masculine, finger pointing. Um, you know, the, the sword isn't being held in the air as in cutting away barriers, having crystal clear thought. It's driven into the earth. It's non-moving. There's a heart here as well. So it has to do with matters of the heart. So in terms of the union, the feminine... Um, has some negative thoughts that are swimming around in her head and uh, they need to be settled. There needs to be balance. 
You need to, need to let go of something because there's something that is affecting the relationship. So, you know, maybe you feel that the masculine betrayed you on some level. Um, but I don't know. You're the one that's holding on to that energy. Okay, so one card. Ten of Cups. Peace, harmony. Happily ever after. Um, that energy is there. there. That possibility of completion, of living happily ever after is definitely there. The card has showed itself. But the, the feminine... Um, feels betrayed on some level maybe she wants this happily ever after but she's concentrating on the negative aspect of things I don't know she was hurt in the past and it caused her to withdraw it caused her to close up very defensive she's wearing a helmet made of iron. She's holding a shield in front of her heart and the sword is driven into the ground. Almost like, um, I'm not making any decisions, I'm not moving. Don't try to approach me. Um, yeah, I, I still need to heal. Can you see that? So hopefully she finds, or she's able to, you know, let go of some of that anger and frustration that she's holding on to. Yeah, very guarded. Okay, so the masculine, solar plexus chakra. So this is courage, power, um, the will, determination, and we can see this movement. Um, movement you know, in the spiritual realm, in the creative realm, and the 3D as well. So maybe he feels empowered when it comes to the feminine, or maybe he feels disempowered. Let's see what the clarifier is. The Eight of Cups. Okay, so this is walking away from something that's mentally and emotionally draining. It's letting go, okay? not being a victim anymore, not being controlled by your emotions, and it's embarking on a spiritual journey. So, you know, the strength coupled with this emotional card here, or withdrawal, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a movement towards her, okay? But what I'm sensing is that there's a lot of courage that is required in order for him to make that decision to move forward. Right? He's kind of, he's ready. Destiny's calling him. But there is an issue with finding the courage to do it. Okay, so as a foundation, we have the nine of fire, rest, and reconsideration. So both aspects have... Uh, with John in order to you know get that energy back or no it says rest and reconsideration so both aspects have been doing a lot of thinking and you can see that definitely over here we can see that also over here as well you know the eight of cups is it requires a lot of thought a lot of contemplation in order to make those changes to move forward towards a twin flame connection especially you know, so this is spiritual strength, but it is also feeling wounded, feeling knocked down. So you, both aspects have taken time to, to heal. Okay, so one card for the feminine, the two of pentacles, and the masculine. Wow, the knight of, or in the king of fire. So the two of pentacles, same card over here. There was change. You know, the feminine felt that wind of change. And withdrew to think. She feels the air, the wind brushing on her face, on her skin, as she's thinking. Um, and it looks like she's thinking about the masculine. 
The masculine is the king of fire. So this is somebody who's a leader, very passionate, very driven. Um, you know, they excite people, they motivate them. Their ideas are extremely creative, entrepreneur, right? So the masculine really took some action. Um, went after something that made him feel financially secure, made him feel powerful, like a king. He's got two kings on his side. And he's tired, right? It took a lot of work, but, um, you know, it seems to me like he's reaping the rewards. Okay, where can I put this? None of these work. Ah. No. Shoot. Put it here. All right. So for the crowning energy, we have uh, Blossom. So this is judgment. Okay. So this is what they both desire. They want to manifest. Wow. This is a very powerful card for me. When consciousness focuses on um, an idea, it begins to change form and manifest. It gathers matter. You know, it's gravity. So that's what's being represented here. It's taking this idea and growing it, you know, in the 3D as well as creatively and spiritually. Um, so, you know, the judgment card, card is all about hearing the, the call, the awakening, um, this is a rebirth. This is, you know, coming out of the fire and restarting anew. This is what you both desire. You both, oops, you both want this new life together and you desire to make it blossom. Okay, so one card each. Actually, one card fell down, so let me just grab that. Nurture the Empress. Wow. Um, I'm saying wow because the Empress takes an idea, she nurtures it and helps it to grow. Okay. Um, so she takes an idea streaming from the subconscious, from the high priestess, and manifests it into the 3D reality. So as a crowning energy, I'm seeing this idea is growing. Okay and it's nearing manifestation. So as a crowning energy, there's a lot of nurturing, there's love, this is unconditional love, a um, lot of powerful alchemy happening on both sides. Well, let's pull some clarifiers, why not? Okay, so one for the feminine, ace of cups and the masculine, three of swords. Okay, so opposite energies here. Okay, so the Ace of Cups is all about starting anew. Um, but this card only arrives when you're ready, when you've let go of the past, when you've healed yourself, you've moved on, and then you can experience true love. True love comes to you. And the Empress is all about unconditional love. That's, you know, the universe uh, runs on love. That's the gasoline. Consciousness drives it but you need love to sustain it, otherwise it collapses back into the void, right? So here we have heartbreak, sadness, pain. Um, so if you want, what I'm seeing here is a lot of healing of the heart to take away the pain, you know, especially with these major arcanas here, this is incredible. Yeah, healing is what I'm seeing here and Illumination and rebirth. Okay, so what is at the heart? We have another major arcana. Uh, so this is the high priest. So this is divination, being divinely guided, um, being the teacher, feeling that spiritual bond, awareness, consciousness, being a light worker sharing your knowledge with others. And here we have a very knowledgeable woman with her book, and I'm so relating to that right now. 
Okay, so at the heart, there is this spiritual quest to share with the world. Wow. Okay, so let's clarifiers, the Eight of Wands, and the Judgment, or sorry, Justice. So Justice is about truth. Um, this is a cosmic balancing scale, right? So the universe and karmic energy is flowing around him, and because he, you send out positive vibrations, that energy will return to you. So he feels that there is karmic justice that he's discovering a truth about consciousness, about spirituality, about his purpose, um, which is what a twin flame connection is all about. The Eight of Wands is communication, Cupid's arrows. So at the heart, the feminine wants to send out loving energy, wants to communicate, wants to talk about what she's discovered, wants to create um, connections with other people. So I see here divine guidance, I see love, and I see karmic energy, laws of attraction at the heart, but also communication. Okay, so the final outcomes for the feminine, we have clarity of belief, nice, way to go. Ace of Swords, decision made. She lets that butterfly free. The butterfly effect is, you know, a butterfly flaps its wings here and it creates a hurricane somewhere else, right? So your intentions, your thoughts drive that um, torsion wave. It's stored on these waves in the ether in the primordial ooze of the universe, right? And when you focus your attention, your consciousness on that, then the wave function collapses and there you have a conscious moment. So I see a release, awesome. I was so hoping for this. Decision becomes made. I see trust, this person's holding their hand over their heart. I see a heart here as well. There's a frequency of love surrounding this person. So decision made, action, movement forward, and it could also be communication as well. Wow, Inception, Zero Point, The Fool. This is just moving forward. It's trusting that everything's gonna work out, being carefree like a child, brand new beginning, coming from zero. Here we have that wave function collapse with the Ace of Swords, coming from the void, zero, conscious decision, trusting that everything's gonna work out fine. And it will because you're letting it happen. You're not holding on to fear. Wow, guys, that's crazy. Um, Okay, so the final outcome for the masculine, five pentacles, feeling alone. Um, okay, so I, I, again, I'm seeing this idea of a journey. You have to cross water in order to get there. Okay, home's on the other side. There's mountains um, that you don't have to climb. Okay, the night is clear. You can see the stars. You have your light, your soul to guide you. So... He wants to make a connection. He wants to bridge that gap. He wants to come home. He wants the feminine to come home. Okay, so let's pull another card. Wow. Four of Wands. Oh my God. Twin Flame. Right? The 1111 card. The Four of Wands. So this is... Isn't that a beautiful picture? There's a cabin here with a fire going inside. And he wants to be with his feminine, curled up in front of his fire, feeling committed, feeling accomplished, feeling like you have it all, that you've arrived. And, 
you know, because it's not a major arcana, I'm feeling that he's really being drawn towards the warmth, towards the love. That is such a beautiful ending, guys. I almost want to cry. Ah. Okay, so what am I doing here? Looking at the bottom of the deck, right? Is that what I do? All right, four of cups. Opportunity beckons. Yes, that's exactly what I'm feeling. Standing at the cross lines, contemplating, thinking about the big questions. But the, the four of pentacles is somebody who's closed off in the physical reality. So they need to open up. They, they're holding on to something. They, they are equating their self-worth with material things. You are good enough, okay? You don't need to give somebody anything. This is all about love. That's what the universe runs on, is love. Okay, I can prove it to you from a quantum physics point of view, guys. Come on. So believe me when I say you have the power to manifest whatever you, your heart's desire, okay? Um, move forward. The opportunity beckons. Take that opportunity, okay? And it looks to me like it is more the feminine who's backing off at this point. Love wins, always wins. Okay, so let's pull some cards for your final message from the universe. And if I have the book here, I'm going to use the Miss and Mermaids, which I haven't used for a long time as well. All right, so yeah, um, Jasmine Beckett Gr Griffith. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. I never actually looked at who wrote it, but I always mention that it's Miss and Mermaids. Okay, so let's pull two final cards for your message from the universe. This one for the feminine. Microcosm sea monsters, yes, that's exactly what I'm feeling. And for the masculine, Arkham Boldle Mermaid. Okay, so the masculine is having um, confidence issues that have to do with his body, I guess. Feeling not good enough, maybe. Um, the feminine is imagining all these worst scenarios. So let me read those. So number 35. I'll read the feminine first. Sorry if I keep knocking the table. And I definitely need bifocals. Oh my god. Okay. Oh yes, I'm a grandmother again. My son, uh, who's 27, just had a baby. So congratulations to you guys. Um, her name is uh, Blakely. Crazy. So, whoops, that's my second grandchild. Okay, stop rocking for a moment, please. Okay. So, microcosm, sea monsters. Containment is essential, she said with a nervous backward glance. Looking, or sorry, losing these beasties on earth, an unfortunate happenstance. It requires my utmost resolve uh, to keep these fiends bottled up inside. To allow them freedom in this world, I simply cannot abide. So I'm going to put the card down and then I'll continue reading. Oh, sorry. Okay. So a melancholy mer mer uh, maiden clutches an alchemical flask. Awesome. Beside her sits her ultimate creation. A microcosmic world of swirling seas and raging monsters. She is uneasy, however, and expands, expends all her energy containing the world. So the meaning is, be careful bottling up your inner demons. Yes, that's exactly what I see. On the outside, you're calm, but inside, you're hiding tumultuous emotions. You're wasting a great deal of energy keeping these incessant monsters contained. You are wasting your faculties trying to make everything appear okay on the surface when really you're hurting internally. Uh, resolve what is inside you. Make peace with your past so that you can move forward with goodness and light in your heart. Make peace with your present self, even if it's not ideal. 
Know that it is within your power to make changes to yourself, but only slowly and with great effort. Take steps to change what you can and make peace with that which you cannot. When, you, when your interior finally reflects your exterior, you will at last be ready to face the world. That is absolutely perfect. Heal and then you can move forward and you do it in the most beautiful way. Okay, so for the masculine, it's number 18, which is 9, which is uh, completion. 35 is 8. So the feminine's kind of caught in this in, uh, infinite cycle. She needs to break the cycle. Okay, so Archimboldo Mermaid. Alone we drift, distractedly. A party drawn apart together, we're invincible. A living work of art. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm feeling here is separation. A desire to reconnect. But there's fear. Alright, so it says, At first glance, she's a pretty mermaid lass, gazing soulfully with her large pale eyes. A closer inspection reveals the myriad of fish and other ocean dwellers that comprise her luxuriant tail, um, combining to create a living work of art. So the meaning is the sum of your parts. Lately, you have been experiencing feelings of self-deprecation. Maybe you have been studying your figure with a dissatisfied eye or bemoaning the size of your feet. You need to stop the hypocritical an analyzing before you sink any lower. You are so much more than the collection of your parts. Other people do not look at you through the lens of a microscope, and it is unhealthy for you to do so. Concentrate instead on the beautiful person you are as a whole and treat yourself with love and affection. Yeah, and that's what I was feeling. You know, there's this guardedness. Um, scared that his heart will be broken that he is not good enough so he may be withdrawing but there's definitely a strong calling there's something's calling him there's an opportunity beckoning and the feminine has created this microcosmic world of fears you need to let go and just fall into the void let it happen all right, guys, I love you so much, and I will see you in a moment for the yin and yang readings. All right, cheers. Hi, guys. So I am just going to give you a quick little run through of my book. Um, so here we have the front page. We have the description, our motto of no fucks given. Then I get into uh, my journey, okay, what I, my education, um, how I arrived at this point where I needed to self-reflect, okay, and then, you know, I talk about how um, education separates consciousness from the physical world, from education itself, uh, which is a critical error, so it causes cognitive dissonance. Um, I also talk about um, Leonardo da Vinci who um, uses art in order to spread this secret message from the ancients, okay? And if you look at, you know, all the great names like Plato, um, Leonardo, um, Pythagoras, all of their inspiration comes from the Vedics. Okay, so um, over time, this information became against the law, right? They developed canon law in order to outlaw geometry and mathematics, this ancient knowledge. Okay, so I go on to talk about the Vedics and how they've already had this theory of everything. Um, they already knew the Pythagoras theorem. Um, they also use this um, 
um, Vedic math, okay? Um, they knew about the squaring of this, the circle, which is um, the Philosopher's Stone from, you know, from the Vesica Pisces comes uh, all the irrational numbers, and they've already known that. They knew that the universe was sound, right? Um, and they used mantras in order to communicate um, and to connect with the universe, with the archetypes, in order to heal themselves. Um, so I, I also talk about the different levels here of consciousness. Okay. And I also mention, you know, the Neolithic carved stones of polyhedra. Those are the five platonic solids um, that are created um, out of geometric patterns created from sound, right? So what happens is when consciousness focus on, focuses on the primordial ether, um, it can materialize into the five platonic solids. And the five pl platonic solids um, create all the matter in the universe. So, yes, yeah, so I talk about matrix there a little bit. You know, it actually has to do with uh, Plato's allegory of the cave and feeling um, trapped by the mind, you know, feeling that there's some information out there, but you just can't access it. There's a matrix um, controlling your, your thoughts, your moves, and it's all from conditioning, all right? So we're beginning to wake up from that. So I also get into sacred geometry, okay? So um, all of these patterns were known by the ancients, Right, and so what these are are 2D representations um, of a physical reality. So these, um, you know, for example, we have the egg of life here, the seed of life. Um, these are singularities, circles that coalesce, um, and as a result of phi dampening, it, there is a space that is created. And in that space um, are geometrical patterns that crystallize into the five platonic solids. Okay, so I talk about what happens at each stage. Okay, when you add the first circle, here we're actually starting with consciousness uh, that creates space. Next, we have the Vesica Pisces, okay? And from the Vesica Pisces, it's a womb. Um, and we get those irrational numbers. Phi and the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, and so once once again, I'm going through every stage of the development of the seed of life, and of course, it makes a Taurus. So this all, you know, has to do with uh, vortex-based math. Uh, that was my original inspiration. Um, I already had. Um, a good understanding of how the universe has been created uh, through vortex-based math. It's all numbers that um, move through these discrete, you know, sequences and um, and create matter and consciousness as well. Um, you know, that's how where consciousness lives in the ether. Okay, so five platonic solids, and here we, we're talking about the. Uh, uh, Archimedes solids as well and how that relates the tree of life the Kabbalah I also relate the tarot to the Kabbalah you know each of these nodes represents different aspects of your psyche oops and actually I'll just do it this way as well so I also talk about the Mandala um, and Merkaba the Merkaba is actually um, two tetrahedrons that are laying base to, to base and they vibrate, they oscillate at light speed and when it reaches uh, the speed of light then that's when things start to crystallize and, and manifest. And here's the Vesica Pisces which is the Philosopher's Stone. Um, you know, finding the value of pi, uh, the radius of the circle, the squaring of the circle, it creates um, the irrational numbers, and that's what the philosopher's stone is. That's what was became illegal, 
And I also talk about how the irrational numbers work with the mind um, and consciousness. There's, you need a certain level of consciousness in order to perceive these irrational numbers. Okay, so here we have um, the trinity of, of transformative roots, the square root of 2, 3, 5, and phi. And what happens at those points and then, of course, we have the Fibonacci sequence that arises. So the, the Fibonacci sequence works in conjunction with phi. Okay, it's a dampening effect of phi. Like I said, that creates that void, okay, so that things can grow. And as things grow, they grow with the Fibonacci sequence. And here we have um, the squaring of the circle. And you can actually see, you know, these voids, these um, movement areas where electricity can move. It's, um, I don't know how well you guys can see it on the screen, but it's it vibrating. And those are just, you know, circles and squares. I didn't add anything, and if you look closely, you can see actual colors. You can see like purple and yellow, right? And that is the red, green, and um, blue refracting and they're following the exact same um, sequence you know phi they're looking for phi this the waves are collapsing until you know it reaches phi but it doesn't it can never actually reach phi right perfect phi so that's what creates growth okay so again, the, the squaring of the circle, and now we get into Marco Rodin, vortex-based math. Uh, I forgot to add this picture, so that's why it's kind of slapped on the side there. But this is um, the Hebrew alphabet, and we can see that it's based on the tetrahedron that I explained earlier. The two tetrahedrons vibrating, and it's the oscillation um, that creates the matter. So the alphabet was taken from the tetrahedron. Okay, so what vortex-based math is, is um, a torus, okay, and so there is a, these number sequences that show up on the torus, and energy follows these sequences of numbers, and that's what creates the matrix, um, the lattice structure uh, that is our reality. Okay, so um, I show here how this information comes from, um, you know, reduction from Pythagorism, Pythagorist addition, um, from the base ten, and and casting out nines. Okay, so nine is um, the spirit. Okay, and the three and the six um, oscillate back and forth. Um, to create that magnetic field and um, um, electromagnetism, right? And then we have uh, a sequence of six numbers that create matter. So they all fit on the torus, and I, I show you how these numbers move across the singularity. Okay, so the vortex-based math is actually the yin-yang, Right here, we got the three and the six with the nine, which is spirit at the center. Um, I talk about magic squares as well, how the numbers are activated. There's actually um, different family groups, um, paired numbers, polar numbers, and they move in perfect symmetry with one another in opposite directions. And that's exactly what, whoops. Um, that's how you get standing waves, that dampening effect. Um, the numbers actually are coordinates um, on the vortex, on the torus. So all of the graphics are mine, except for um, uh, Mark Taylor, I believe his name is. We'll get to that point. But the energy comes out of the torus as um, atheron uh, emanations, okay? And so that's, again, what causes matter. 
that's what galaxies are. That's what, you know, the universe is. That's what blood is made of. I'll get to that point. But here I'm showing how the energy moves through the vortex. These are the magic squares. And when you map out the magic squares onto the torus, they uh, create the sacred ge geometrical patterns, right? So here we have the square, we have a, a rectangle, we have the Star of David, the uh, eight-pointed star, you know, and they get quite complex, okay? And here I'm talking about um, the Holy Grail is actually the Taurus. All right, this is a side view of the Taurus, and you can see how the energy is flowing through. Again, there's different circuits that are running on the skin of the Taurus, and they all have different functions. Okay, and it's all about um, frequency, sound. Okay, and, and here we have sound creating the um, uh, the eight-pointed star and how the octaves are also on the skin of the torus as well and it's you know when the wave function collapse happens at different octaves it also creates matter right the periodic table so here we have the Fibonacci sequence mapped on to the torus as well creating you know the different star of davids and different impointed stars as well here we talk about the sin, the sin wave and it's um the standing wave right that is um creating matter it's within that void so this is richard merrick's theory of interference Okay, and here we can see how um, matter is manifested on the boundary condition of the torus. Here is the periodic table. And it's based on the seven crystal system. And I also talk about the DNA as well. The sequence is what DNA uses. Okay, it follows that energy. The electron, these are blood cells, of course, they're toruses. Um, I'm still working on these two pages, so that's why they look different, and this one as well. So this one is about biological function, about how we emerge from the primitive streak and follow the Fibonacci sequence. And then I get into toruses. So I give lots of... Um, examples of toruses. Okay, so here we have DNA, um, protein, bacteriophages, carbon nanotubes. The universe also is a torus. Um, they've sent out these satellites to measure the background radiation and what it's been discovered is that it is a torus. Talk about cymatics, how sound vibrated creates patterns, um, sacred geometric patterns. The electron also follows the path. Uh, this is the uh, more Cladian. Okay, and this is the Buckyball, Buckmeister Fuller. Um, this is uh, the DNA actually is in the shape of a buckyball. Okay, and again, another uh, doctor has discovered that DNA is in the shape of a icosa decahedron, decagon, sorry. And this is water, takes on the same patterns. Okay, and then I also talk about Nassim Harriman, his model of the holographic universe and quantum gravity, and how it is a, you know, 
at the heart of it all is a Q, um, Q de decohedron, right? And it kind of oscillates between uh, dodecahedron and icosahedron, and it's that folding and shifting through a square that creates the magnetic field. Okay, so um, I guess you know, this um, shows the different shapes that is created. Okay, and then I talk a little bit about string theory. You know, only because it talks about vibrating strings, but their theory is very vague, right? They don't explain how or why these strings vibrate, and I'm telling you, it is because of a torus. I also talk about, sorry, Clay, Stew Clay Taylor. Oh my God, I'm so bad with names. But he's got a theory on um, reflection of light, how light is created. Okay. Um, he's a really great guy. Uh, I just recently became friends with him, so I'm stoked about that. But he talks about how color is actually made of three primary colors, which is red, green, and blue. Um, and then we get refraction, and the rest of the col colors um, are manifested. So the opposite spectrum is magenta, cyan, and yellow. Okay, and again, it folds once again to create even more, you know, the entire spectrum, basically. So I talk about that. And these um, light is a result of those standing waves as well. And he maps um, the octaves as well. He matches it with color. Beautifully done. I talk about my theory of light as well. And then I sum it up with um, Leonardo once again and what it all means. Okay, and then I talk about consciousness. Uh, this is a theory by Hammerhoff and um, Penrose on consciousness. Um, Hammerhoff, Dr. Hammerhoff is an uh, anesthetologist, so he ha he's been practicing for about 40 years, so he has a lot of knowledge about consciousness, you know, when somebody loses their consciousness, when they're being put under general anesthetic. So their theory is all about um, the quantum information and how it is um, consciousness resides within microtubules of the brain, more specifically on the dendrites of neurons in the brain. Okay, so there's these microtubules and um, as a result of standing waves and, and wave function collapse, um, you know, consciousness actually focuses on that thought and it causes a collapse, it causes a conscious moment. Um, so yeah, uh, I also talk about the quantum soul. They have a theory about quantum soul as well. I talk about the heart and the, the frequency of love. It's all about love. And then I also relate it to Carl Jung the individual individuation process. Okay, so this is in relation to um, tarot as well. You know the the individual individuation process um, has archetypes like the persona, uh, the shadow side, um, the ego. Okay, and so those would be related, of course, to the moon, the devil, the um, the magician. So I talk about how that's all related. Okay. And I also talk about meditation, which isn't in this part. And then I conclude it. Okay. So um, I also, you know, of course, have the card descriptions and stuff like that. And of course, I think I've showed this to you guys as well.
so I go through each card and um, I give a little explanation uh, related to consciousness uh, and what the cards mean. Oh. So here's the chakras and so forth. All right. So my, I do hope you guys buy the book. Um, there's a lot of information here, and um, I've done a lot of research. It's really interesting stuff. It all relates to tarot. And yeah, okay, so please leave a comment, and I love you guys. Cheers.